In this video, I am going to pretend to be a client. Actually, I'm going to pretend to be several clients. Firstly, I'm going to show you the migration email that the client will receive. Then I'm going to pretend to be a client who is a regular portal user, knows their portal login credentials, and therefore the setup of their one-click account is straightforward. And that same client is actually a director of multiple companies, and I'm going to show you that when they activate their account, they'll have access to all the entities they previously had access to within Portal. Then I'm going to pretend to be a client who has forgotten their Portal password and or their security questions if you were using security questions within Portal. Next I will pretend to be a client who never ever activated their Portal account but has received a migration email. Then I'll pretend to be a client who was suspended and just show you again that there is no migration email received. And lastly, I will pretend to be a client whose portal account was deleted and again just confirm that they don't receive a migration email. So let's begin. In setting up this demonstration, all of my test clients had email addresses using mailnator.com as the domain. Mailnator.com is a temporary email service where the emails last just a couple of hours before they're automatically deleted. But what that means is I didn't need to create individual email accounts for the purpose of this demonstration. So the first client that we're going to look at is John Bain. I happen to know that his email address was jbain100 at mailnator.com. So I type in jbain100, hit go, and I see here his migration email. The migration email came from notifications at accountantspace.co.uk. It had a subject, Accountants are us, which is the name of my accounting practice, one-click activation. You will remember from one of the earlier videos that you can customise the email template. You can also customise the subject, which I didn't actually mention in the video. Click on the email and see the logo of the company that sent it. I can see the email as it was when I customised it in the earlier video. And most importantly, as the client, I see the link that I click on to activate my new one-click account. So let's click here now. When I click the link, I'm taken to a web page that looks very similar to my portal login page, except you will notice at the top that the URL is my domain, which was rm1.accountantspace.co.uk, whereas previously it was rm1.clientspace.co.uk. Other than that, from a client perspective, they are logging into their one-click account. Assuming the client knows their logon details, they'll just log on now as normal. So what will happen is, in this case, John Bain will type in his email address, John Bain, or J Bain, 100 at com, and John's password. And hit login. He's then prompted to create his new one-click account, enter the current password that he uses in Portal, and new password that he wants to enter for one-click, which can be the same password he's using in Portal. Click OK. So it turns out that it can't be the same password that the client used in Portal, so we will make it something slightly different. Hit OK. And the client is taken straight into CCH one click. At that stage, the client can run through the little tutorial if they like. Click next on each item, and you will see the one click screen for this particular client. Now, there's a couple of things worth pointing out for John Bain. Firstly, up the top here, it'll show that John Bain is logged in as Bats and Balfrey because he is a director of Bats and Balfrey. John is also an individual client, and over on the right hand side, John can change to be himself or Bats and Balfrey. and now John is himself. You'll see over on the right hand side here also the client team area. So this lists everyone that is in the responsibility tab for the client within Central. In this case, as John is the individual, 
he has Jenny as his partner, Richard as the assignment manager, and you will remember in one of the earlier videos that you can change the client team defaults as to whether or not you want to show the employee's roles. If I change back to John as director of Bats and Balthery, you can see that in his client area he only sees Jenny. When he goes into Messages and Documents, he will need to agree to the practices, terms and conditions the first time he goes into Messages and Documents, assuming that the practice is using terms and conditions. I'll click I agree on that. Again, he has a little tutorial. We can click Next on each screen. And we have what we call swim lanes. So John Bain as an individual, he has two messages at the moment, um, none unread. Under Bats and Balfour as a director, he has one message, nothing unread. If it is a director of multiple companies, he has too many on the screen. There will be a scroll bar on the right hand side to scroll down, but he can also click anywhere in the header row to minimise or maximise the appropriate row. In one of the earlier videos, I mentioned that there's some new features for both the client and the employee. One thing the client will notice is when sending a new message or applying to an existing message, they have a rich text format editor so they can type their text, multiple lines, they can format their text, changing colour etc, changing font size, making it bold, font size, etc, etc. And if they have multiple employees listed in their client area, they can also choose who they're going to message. We'll just message Jenny, click out of there, put in a subject, test, and hit send. From the messages screen, the client can also click the return to home page button here, and that will return to the dashboard. Now if you have enabled the client for more than just messages and documents, for example for VAT returns, they will have an additional tile here for VAT returns. We will now log out as John, close the browser, and now let's pretend that we're the next client. So we'll change our email address, we're now Brian Blood, which is bblood at malinator.com, and now we're Brian Blood, and we have the same email, the migration email. Brian will click on his email, he'll click on the link, come to the same screen, and Brian is not an active portal user and has forgotten his password. So he'll click on the Forgot Password option, type in his email address, bblood at mailanator.com, click Reset Password. It's a message here saying that he has been sent a new um, email with a new password. So let's go back to his webmail and we'll click go to get back to his inbox. And here's his password reset email. So he'll click on that. It has a link to log in. It also, most importantly, has his new password. Control C to copy that. Click this link. And he's actually now taken to the one click login page. And at that stage, he can put his email address in again, bblood at malinator.com, copy that password, or paste that password, click login, and then he is asked to re-enter his security questions from when he first created his portal account. Now, if by chance he can't remember those, he can click down here to use an activation code. If he can remember his security questions, he can type them in, continue, and then he'll be able to create his one-click account. But let's pretend that he's also forgotten those. In that case, he can click the link at the bottom to use his activation code. Now, his activation code is either his client code, unless the practice is using SMS messaging for activation purposes, and also has a mobile phone number recorded for the client. So when the client clicks here, he's asked for an activation code. In this instance, it would appear that the practice doesn't have a mobile phone number for the client, but the client fortunately knows his client code and can put in his client code, which is that. Click OK, and then we can complete the account setup by entering the temporary password. 
as we learnt earlier, we can't use the same password as used previously, so we will use that, and we'll click continue. Password must be confirmed. We'll do this again then. Click OK. And Brian is now logged into his one-click account. He can click Next as we saw earlier to watch the tutorials, or we can simply close them. So, let's log out of Brian's account. And now we'll change the email account to Maureen Bolt. Her email address happens to be M-O-B-O-L-T. go. And she has an activation email as well. Maureen clicks on the email, clicks on the link. And again, as with Brian Blood, Maureen has begun her password. But in this instance, the accounting practice has a mobile phone number recorded for Maureen. So let's just quickly look at that. We've got password into her email address. Go back to her email account. She has the password reset email. Temporary password. Copy that. Click the link. And this time we're going to log in is more involved. With that temporary password. Maureen can't remember her security questions either, but when she clicks this link to use an activation code, she gets a slightly different message saying the activation ID has been sent to her mobile number. So let me just grab that now. And the text has come through and says that the code is 494835. Hit OK. And we can now complete the setup process. Paste that temporary password again. Create the new password. Click OK. And Maureen is now logged into her account. So far so good. Let's log out as Maureen. Close that. And now the next one I want to look at is Matthew Bolt. Matthew's email address is Matt Bolt at mailnator.com. Matt also has an activation email. Now you'll remember in the earlier demo, Matthew Bolt hasn't actually activated his Portal account. So he had received an activation email from Portal. He'd never acted on that, but because he'd received an activation email from Portal, he has now been migrated to OneClick. Potentially, even though he'd never activated his Portal account, the practice may have sent him messages, and those messages had to be migrated. So therefore, he has been sent an activation email. Let's assume that he wants to activate his account this time around. The email says he needs to log in with his portal ID. Let's click the link. Matthew is presented with the same screen as previously. He has never ever created a portal account, and therefore he hasn't got a password that he's been able to forget, but the only option is for him to click the forgot password. So let's do that. He will type in his email address, Matt Bolt at mailinator.com click reset password and then he'll go back to his email account and here's his password reset email so exactly the same process he will then go through copy the temporary password and go and recreate his account I won't bother doing that now given that we've gone through that process a few times already there were two more accounts that we had activated for Portal in our previous video. The first one was Charlotte Blair, C 
Blair at marlinlater.com. I click go to access her account. There's nothing in her email. She hasn't received a migration email. And that was because you will remember in the previous video her account had been suspended in Portal. So her account has been migrated and when the practice is ready to reactivate the account she will then be able to log in and create her one-click account at that stage using the email that she'll be sent when her account is reactivated. And lastly we had Sophie Carmichael Sophie C at marinator.com click go and Sophie's email box is empty as well because in her case her portal account had been activated at some stage but then had been suspended and deleted and therefore no migration has happened at all and she doesn't know anything about the migration process has not received an email from a client perspective I think that's a good demonstration of the different possibilities of what your clients will go through with respect to activating their one-click accounts after the migration process thank you for watching